Welcome back to Catch and Dinner. Today, Stefan and I are in the beautiful Bahamas. It's a gorgeous sunny day. And what do we have here but a lionfish? We've actually speared a few, and today is the day that we're going to be turning these lionfish into one of our favorite recipes, lionfish tacos. So the reason why we try to harvest as many lionfish as we can is because it's actually a good thing to do. Lionfish are bad for the reef. They're an invasive species. So if you see a lionfish and you have a spear, best thing to do is to spear them, but first you have to know how to process them properly. So Stefan is going to take you into the kitchen. He's gonna show you how to safely remove these spines off of the fish because these spines have a neurotoxin in them. If you get pricked by this spine, this is not gonna be fun. So he's gonna show you how to safely and effectively process the fish and then I'm going to show you our delicious lionfish taco recipe. So come on into our kitchen. We'll see you there. Now, first off, I got to say there's many ways of doing this. Basically two main ways. One is by removing the spines first. And the second, without doing that and just filling it right out. Personally, I prefer not having to cut the spines out because there's a way to do it safely. Otherwise, you have actually a good chance of getting stuck once you have a bunch of free spines floating around and dealing with them, you could actually get stuck. So if you decide the first method, all you need is a good pair of scissors. Now these, you know, we're a VRBO here, they're not the beefiest, but if you have good shears, you know, good scissors, or even metal, you know, scissors that you use to cut sheet aluminum or, you know, sheet metal, you can actually uh, use those. They work great and they have a longer handle, you know, but all you do basically is uh, get to those poisonous spines and uh, here they are. I mean, these guys, no good. There's some in here, there, and in here. Now, the pectoral fin has none of these. You know, there's no spines in there, so that you can actually hold. So if you really wanted, you could just go along and just start cutting and you know, just remove all of them, top, bottom here, ventral fins, and then that back one here. So you just cut. I mean, as you can imagine, it's pretty easy. You know, you just cut like this and you know, just make sure again you don't get too close to the spines. But personally, I'd rather just do it without do cutting the spines. You know, so let me show you. So all you have to do is just be mindful. You know, that you need a long bladed knife or you know something that will get you away from the spine. So you don't want to be too close feeling. But if you're far enough, you can actually do this in one swoop, and it's very safe and effective. So basically, you just come at an angle right behind the pectoral fin here, and you make your first cut, first incision. Again, this is not my favorite knife, that's just what's here, so I'm working with it here. So you go at an angle like so. You get, again, you gotta be careful. You get right by the spine, and again, there's nothing poisonous here, so you can actually hold on to the head, and then not fear of anything bad happening. And then, it's as simple as basically as you would normally feel like any fish is following the spine tight to the spine all the way down basically I mean that's it I mean you flip it that's the meat you can see it's all clean so I just switched to a you know better blade here so I'm just gonna go like this all the way this you gotta stay real close to the skin because there's really no red meat here so you can just 
do your regular fillet thing and look at that nice meat twitching still this thing's been dead for a while so just the nerves obviously and uh, you know as you would normally do you have the rib cage here and it's pretty freaky I'm trying to hold it and it's twitching away as I'm pushing I don't know if you can see that anyways must be uh, the revenant or something like that or want to come back to life so yeah you just basically cut out the rib cage there's nothing to it really the biggest thing is just making sure that you stay away from the spines and that's that you know and you left and this is just your average size lionfish by no means a giant I got some big ones earlier during the week but uh, yeah that's your fillet it's beautiful it's just a little piece of uh, oh, that was just the scale so yeah good to go so it does help to have the spines pointing downward so when you do come in fillet you don't have to worry about getting stuck and again with a long bladed knife you can go right down to it flip it cut it and that's it I mean there's no way on earth that you can get stuck unless I mean you're really trying so as you saw super easy you know you're left with only the bones as you should but at this point it's not done I mean you got to be careful still with those spines so what you got to do is discard this properly meaning not throwing it in the trash because that could really end badly for whoever is dealing with the trash so all you have to do is either toss it back in the water if you're close enough to the water that's what I do or if you're not here you know we're a little distance from the water so I'm just gonna toss it in the woods somewhere I know for sure nobody's just walking and you know, I'm not in a path obviously so I'm just gonna toss it out but again something to be mindful of because even though you didn't get stuck somebody else could still get stuck and that you definitely don't want because you're gonna have one unhappy person on your hands so uh, okay time to cook so Allison was gonna take it from here it's gonna show you how to turn this into an amazing fish taco alright I'm ready to show you the ingredients for our lionfish tacos and of course the main ingredient lionfish all we have left to do here is cut them into little strips that are gonna be bite-sized pieces which you want for your tacos I'll show you the other ingredients, which is some flour that you're going to dredge the fish in. After flouring, we're going to be putting it into some lightly beaten egg. I have some salt and pepper in there too. And a little bit of water actually, a couple tablespoons. Then we have our panko breadcrumbs. I put a little salt, a little pepper, and a little crushed red, which you can do if you, like us, like a little kick. And then the other ingredients are some green onions or chives, some quartered cherry tomatoes, some diced avocado and lime wedges, some red cabbage cut up into perfect little pieces for the tacos topping. And also for the topping we have some shredded Mexican cheddar cheese and some salsa. All right, so now you know all the ingredients, let's get to it. As you can imagine, our mouths are already watering. I mean, this fish would be good to just pop it in our mouth just as is, but they're gonna taste even more amazing when we put them together in our tacos.
time. My favorite part was taste these bad boys. They look awfully good. And then uh, when Allison was cooking them, I mean, the smell, and as you saw, the meat is just pure white. And it does look like grouper. I mean, I kid you not, it does look like grouper. So, look at this. Look at this. That's what I'm about to take home. <laughs> I'm sure it's a winner. Mm. I don't even have to ask. Wow. Because we tasted the fish by itself. It it's amazing. phenomenal. And in a taco with mm. all of these beautiful, colorful ingredients. Wow. Fresh. I mean, yeah, can how can it. you go wrong? It's impossible. Nah. <laughs> so? <laughs> all I gotta say is, you guys gotta try this recipe. Lime fish, you know, it's too bad, but they're everywhere. And since they are, I mean, it's easy to get to them. Go spare some. Try this recipe. Leave us some comments and tell us how good it is because <laughs> either I'm just crazy or I'm not sure what, but this is to die for. Yeah. Look at that. Yum. Now, I should say, not that I want to get stung, but if you ever did, just remember, go to the closest place where you can get hot water. When I say hot, I mean the hottest you can tolerate. Without in, getting burnt. Without getting burnt. In the area where obviously you got stung, and that's going to denature the protein enough that the pain will subside, and it's really going to make a huge difference. I got stung here last time in the Bahamas, not by a lionfish, but... You know, same kind of toxin. It's uh, it was a stingray, and uh, I tell you what, when they put my hand in a sippy cup that was boiling water, it felt heavenly. Not so, boiling, just very well, very hot. No, well, it was hot. Boiling would have burnt you. But uh, it still felt good. So <laughs> remember that. Yeah. So thanks for coming along on our adventure. We really do appreciate it when you guys you know subscribe, comment, you know leave you know thumbs up, whatever like, yeah, and it really helps. You know, keeps us going. So until next time, you guys take care. Hope to see you again on our next adventure. I'm catching dinner.